Okay, so we are going to go ahead and solve an AP Physics B mechanics free response problem from 2015, and the, this is the third one. What I encourage you to do is go onto the College Board's website, try this problem yourself, and then check back in on this video for an explanation of how to do it, and then also the scoring rubric. Okay, so now that you've worked at this problem, let's go ahead and do A together. So let's see, using integral calculus derive the rotational inertia up for the rod around its end to show that it is ML squared over three. Excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, so those of you in my AP physics class, we very likely have not learned that. You're probably like, okay, Miss Walker, you're a horrible teacher. I apologize, but it's one thing that it's not the end of the world um, that if we don't get to it. So, but it's some fun calculus to go through it right now. So. We know that the equation for moment of inertia for point masses is essentially mr squared. We now need to go ahead and use that idea with calculus ideas. So in calculus, we know that the equation is going to be essentially r squared, and it could be dependent on x or y, um, and we're going to integrate with respect to the mass. So that is our moment of inertia equation dealing with calculus ideas. In this case, we are just dealing with like essentially x. I'm going to call this x equals zero, and this x equals l. And those are pivots. So I'm going to essentially integrate from x equals 0 to x equals L. That's our two integr integration spots of x squared dm. So now we need to figure out dm stands for the mass, so we're integrating with respect to mass. So let's see if we can figure out what that is. So I know that essentially some little bit of mass, I'm going to call that dm, is to the whole big mass of that little length is, which I'm going to call dl, that's a tiny little length, is to the whole length l. So now let's go ahead and manipulate this and solve for dm. So dm is essentially big M over L, and that's like a ratio, um, dl. So we can go ahead and plug that in here and use that in our integral. So we have x equals 0 to L of x squared, um, which that's just x squared. Um, and again, DL in this case, we are integrating, let's just call that DX, because that's what we're integrating with respect to. So I'll go ahead and call that X. Um, so that's DX, and again, let's just call that DX. Cool. Um, so this is essentially M over L DX. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at it. We're integrating with respect to X. So I'm going to pull out the M over L integral from X equals 0 to L of X squared DX. So let's see, we have M over L. We go ahead and integrate it. So this is going to be one third x cubed from x equals zero to l. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So that's like essentially we still have m over l times one third l cubed minus zero. Great. So let's see what is that going to give us. So that's going to be m over l. That zero just disappears. One third l cubed, which this is just one third. One of the l's cancels out. M all squared. We got our good old answer. Awesome. Let's go ahead and go through the rubric part of this one. Okay, so you essentially get one point for using the correct dm right there, essentially finding that little tiny mass length. Um, you get one point for the correct limits of integration, and you get one point for using funnels calculus to get our answer. So this is out of three points. Cool. Let's go ahead and go on to the next part. Okay, good old part B. So the rod is fixed at one end. Okay, we can see that in our picture and allowed to fall from a horizontal position A, so right here, to the vertical position B. Okay, derive an expression for the velocity of the free end. So we want the velocity right here. And again, it's a linear velocity unless it says otherwise. And this is the linear velocity B. Express your answer in terms of ML and physical constants. So like acceleration due to gravity, gravitational constant, all that good stuff. Okay, anytime things are changing positions, changing heights and changing velocities. I love using energy conservation. That's going to be our best bet. So from this point right here at A to this point right here, let's look at those two points. Initially, it has a ton of gravitational potential energy. If it rests, no kinetic energy. Then when it reaches this point, it's at its lowest point, essentially. So let's say no gravitational potential energy, and it is moving. How is it moving? It is just good old rotating. So I'm going to say KE rotational. So let's go ahead and set this up as equation. So we have UG equals KE rotational. So UG, again, is going to be big MGH, and KE rotational is 1 half I omega squared. Okay, so let's think about what H is, because this is not just a point mass rotating. So I think of, like, all the mass 
being essentially concentrated at the center of mass. And that is going to be like essentially the height that it goes through. So we will say the height is going to be L over 2. And again, I think of it like this point right here doesn't move at all. Well, this point moves as a distance L. The average of those two is going to be L over 2. Or if you do it at a different point, that point just moves a little bit. That point moves a lot. The average of those is going to be L over 2. Yeah, that's kind of fun kind of math. So let's plug that in. So H is L over 2. I is going to be our one third ML squared. And we want to find, let's go ahead and just find omega squared for now, and then we can go from that. Um, I went ahead and do, let's do some fun simplifying. There's M in both terms. There is an L on both sides. Um, oh my goodness, there's a one half on both sides. So much good old simplifying. So we essentially have G equals one third L omega squared. So I am getting 3G L square root is going to be equal to omega. Okay, so now we want to find the velocity, not just the angular velocity. So keep in mind, linear velocity v is the angular velocity times the distance from the pivot. In this case, we are a distance l from the pivot, so let's plug that in. So this is, I'm back, okay. So omega, again, was 3g over l. r, again, the distance it is from the pivot is the whole length of the rod, it's just l. So let's see, we can simplify that. That's essentially the l by itself, if we put that under square root, is like l squared. It's like L squared over L. So this is essentially square root of 3GL if we simplify it. And that is going to be our linear velocity V. Okay. So for this part, we are going to use, this is also going to be out of three points. Um, it is one point for using conservation of energy. So if you use that strategy, you're going to get one point. There, you're going to get one point for using the height as L over 2. And then you're going to use get one point for using the relationship between angular and linear velocities and also using r as l so those are your three points okay time for okay so now we get to go ahead and do a fun experiment okay so uh, haha anytime we're doing an experiment gosh the ap exam was linear and and let's see if that's that's what we'll do um so indicate which quantities we graph deal a straight line a uh, straight line that always pretty much means linearizing whose slope could be used to calculate a numerical value for the acceleration due to gravity g. Okay, so let's go ahead and then we're going to have to use the remaining blah, blah, blah in the table to label everything. So we know, um, we just found the velocity to be square root of 3gl. I'm just going to rewrite that as essentially square root of 3g times square root of l. Again, that's the same thing. I just rewrote it slightly differently. So linear equation we know is essentially y equals mx plus c. So that is our linear equation. So if we compare these two things, essentially V is going to essentially be Y. So the Y, so the Y axis variable is going to be our Y on my table, while the X variable essentially is square root of L. And again, the units of square root of L is just going to be square root length of length units, which is going to be meters, so square root of M. Cool. And then we are just left with, um, I'll go ahead and highlight it in pink, is the slope is just going to be square root of 3g. So again, the slope represents square root of 3g, whatever that is. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our table and see what we need to calculate. So we're given the velocity, meters per second, so we're good on that. We're going to need to calculate the square root of the length, which again, that's just square root of m. So essentially, I'm going to see what square root of 0.25 is. I know that is just going to be 0.5. Cool. I'm going to do it for each of those. So it's square root of 0 0.5, 0 0.707, and I'll just fill out the rest of the table. You do this. Okay. So I went ahead and filled out the tables with the way I went about going about this one. This is actually a problem is only worth one point overall, and that's just for labeling the correct horizontal and vertical axis. There are other ways you can do this as well. Some people might be, let's see, if you had v equals square root of 3g over L, times L, excuse me, some of you might be like, I don't like dealing with square roots, I'm going to square both sides. So v squared is 3gl. If you decide to square both sides, then if we compare v squared equals 3gl to y equals mx plus v, then the y variable would just be v squared, so that would be the vertical axis. The x variable or horizontal axis would just be l, and then the slope would represent 3g. You're welcome to do it that way, or you can do it the way I just went ahead and did. Cool, let's go to the part. Okay, so now we just gotta have to plot that straight line data using points on the grid below. Okay, so clearly scale and label all axes. Great. Include units, beautiful. 
um, and then draw your line if that's it. Okay, so when you do this, one little thing, they want you to fill up most of the grid. So make sure you choose a scale that fills up most of the grid. I'm gonna go ahead and just plot the data and then you can just check back in on my video. Okay, so here is the good old data. And again, make sure you count it yourself first, it's good practice. Um, that is out of three points. Um, you get one point if you have a scale that fits at least half the grid, at least half grid, one half of grid. Uh, so don't just draw the graph like in this little corner over here. You notice that the scale, I started at two, um, just because the lowest velocity is 2.7, and that would be a nice little easy number for it to also. Um, you'll see you one point if the data you graphed was essentially from what you had earlier. So using all these values right here, you graph that data. And then one point for a line of best fit. Um, so this is worth one point as well. And again, you should have it be a straight line. Use a ruler, straight edge, any of that good stuff. Make sure the line goes through about um, as many points as possible, but there should be about the same number above and same number below. In this case, the line of best fit really just hit it perfectly, which is kind of nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the next one. So EI, we want to use your straight line. Go ahead and find an experimental value for G. Okay, so if we're using our straight line, we are going to need to find the slope. So when you are finding the slope, make sure you're using points on your line of best fit. That's super, super important. AP will emphasize that. I'm going to go ahead and look at this point right here because that looks like a nice like little spot and this point right here. So those will be my two points. So I'm going to say slope by now is good old rise over run. So I will go ahead and rise six to down to three. And then my run is what is this number? That's 1.15 to 0.55. So 1.15 to 0.55. Cool. I plug this in my good old calculator and I get this to be five, essentially that's the what meters per second variable over square root of m. You can leave it like that or rewrite that as that'll be essentially what? Five meters per second times one over square root of m. So that's just five square root of m um, meters per second. Awesome. So that is our slope. So now we want to use that slope to find an experimental value for g. Let's go back to what we said earlier. Earlier we said, based on this, that the slope is equal to square root of 3g. So let's go ahead and put that in. So slope equals square root of 3g. So the slope is 5, and that equals square root of 3g. So let's see, I'm going to square both sides. So that's going to be what? 25 equals 3g. Do some fun math. Divide both sides by 3. And I get, what do I get g to be? 8.33 meters per second squared. Cool, that's fun. Okay, let's go ahead and go through the rubric for that one. So it is going to be one point if you get the correct slope. And make sure you are using points on that line of best fit. It's okay to use a data point. I prefer not just to get out of practice with that unless the data point is on that line of best fit. So one point for correct slope, and then one point um, for using that slope to correctly calculate G. So that is going to be out of two points. Okay. This last little part, so describe um, two ways in which the effects of air resistance could be reduced. So let's see if we could get rid of like drag, air resistance, any of that good stuff. Well, of course you could do the experiment in a vacuum. That's one way to do it. Let's go ahead and make a little list of things. Uh, we can also make the little rod shorter, so shorter rod length, just so it doesn't experience as much air resistance. We could also make it um, more massive, so increase mass of rod, because then air resistance, like if you drop like, you know, a tiny little piece of paper versus like a coin, that paper is going to have a lot more air resistance than a coin. That coin is a lot more massive. Or we could make the object more aer aerodynamic. So increase how much aerodynamic it is. Cool. So all those ways would be really fun to do it. Um, you get this one is just out of two points. And the points you get for that is just at least two correct ways. So if you said more than two, great, but you don't get any bonus points for that. Um, cool. So again, my handy dandy rubric, you can add up how many points you got. But my rubric is if you're getting between 9 to 15 points, um, that is around an AP score of 5. If you get around 7 to 8 points, that's an AP score of 4. 5 to 6 points is around a 3. 4 points is a 2. And 0 to 3 points is a 1. And that is going to be your good old rubric. Well, thanks so much. And again, that's just my rubric, not necessarily college board rubric. So, But that's approximately equivalent to um, you know, what AP scores will kind of work out to be.
And uh, cool. Thanks for watching.